this is Abby from Realistic Kitchen and Gardens and today I'm going to show you how to vacuum seal in a beginning method. So I use vacuum sealing a lot of times to make a shortcut meal if I have one of those days where oh, I don't want to cook anything or oh, I didn't thaw anything. A lot of times I can just grab these things out of the freezer, put them in the microwave as is. It's super easy. So. We're going to start right off with the leftover pieces of chicken. I'm using my Potane vacuum sealer. There is a dry and a moist setting. So we're going to turn it to moist and then we're going to open it up and start by creating the bottom seal of your bag by hitting the seal button. Once it's finished, you're going to pull the bag to length and cut it. And then you're going to fit the piece of meat in it and then fit it in between the two little foam pieces. That is the Potane sealer and we hit vac and seal. It both messes up how it seals and it creates a mess in the foam bar where it seals inside and after it seals it itself. And in this case, it specifically causes a broken seal circled here. That will, that's not vacuum sealed and it will freeze or burn. It will also leak and end up scenting your freezer. So I'm just putting it right back on and hitting seal again, but it actually fails again. Seal number one was yellow and seal number two is green. And I have that broken seal circled in red. Pop it in a third time. In theory, you should actually stop here and wipe the seal with a paper towel that you'll see me do in just a second to try to make that seal work better. And we finally got it to seal properly. But there's an easier way to do this. You just pat dry the piece of meat if it's a little bit juicier at the start. Make your life easier, plan ahead. And it's something you just have to learn from experience sometimes or from research. I'm wiping the outside, I'm wiping the inside uh, just because it can make a mess in the freezer. And then I'm wiping inside the two layers of the foam. Now that this is successfully sealed, I weigh it and then I label what it is and how much it weighs in the date I did it. Method two is actually to manually vacuum all the air out rather than letting it automatically do all the air pull out because it will pull harder and suck. Think of sucking juice out of a straw. If you just suck on it harder and harder, you just make the whole juice bag shrink even more and cause more of a mess. That's basically what happens with the vacuum sealer. So with this manual, you can still get it nice and tight so there's no air, but you can keep it from getting up into the actual vacuum sealer system. So watch that flow of liquid before it gets up to the seal. So you can see that liquid line is just to the top and it seals properly the first time and there's no mess in the seal. Again, weigh and label. And method three is what I do. I usually only have to vacuum seal one or two little pieces like this. This was only three pieces. So I fold the edges of the bag over inside out, kind of like a Ziploc bag, so that when I put something messy in, the mess stays on the inside of the bag way lower. It doesn't make a mess. Um, but with this, this is chicken wings. The chicken wings I'm going to end up using for stock since they're seasoned and cooked and yummy. But keep in mind when you vacuum seal something like this that if it's sharp or if it has a bone in it, anything like that, if you do the automatic vac and seal, it will suck really hard on it. And sometimes it will suck so hard on it, it will actually break the seal on the bag. So this one didn't somehow. Um, I actually also buy really high quality bags for my own convenience so I don't have to keep continuously resealing things and resealing things. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. If you're interested in this machine, I actually have a link on my website to it. It gives me a small little commission on it if you buy it through my website link. If you like this kind of stuff, like, comment, and subscribe.